The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September, what is today? The September 18th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you have a question but you can't call in, I've got your back. Send me an email. Send that out to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with the mixed bag out there. Now, I'm not expecting too much to take place between now and 2 o'clock. Maybe things just kind of coming back to neutral as the markets await the Fed decision. But as we begin our day, we've got a mixed bag. That mix goes like this. You've got the Dow off 81 points, two tenths of percent. Flat for the S&P 500, off one point. Flat for the NASDAQ, up 10 points. Flat for the Russell, up two points. Flat for the semis, they are truly flat. Uh, the trainings are up 53 points, about three tenths of a percent of a move there. Gold's up seven bucks. Silver's down 17 cents. Light three crude just went uh, negative by a nickel. No big deal there. Natural gas off three pennies. 30 year treasury down one point, about one point. 24 ticks printed out at 126.04. Now, our leader in the clubhouse out here is uh, West Pharmaceuticals up 14 bucks, about 5%. Super Micro, nine bucks, 2%. Duolingo, 750, about 3%. Via Inc. $6, 119% move there. Hmm. Penumbra, $6, $3%. And Icon PLC is up 5 bucks. That's about a 2% move. Our shaker to the downside, led by ResMed Inc., off 11 bucks, about 5%. Asthma Holdings, $10.30, $10.30, one and a quarter percent. Netflix down 9 bucks, about one and three tenths. Palo Alto down about 7 or 2%. And Sencora Inc. is off 2.5%. That's a $6 move to the downside. So we got movers. And we've got shakers. But let's begin our day taking a look at um, some of the tools that we usually look at to open up the show. The first one being that New York Stock Exchange, the Advanced Decline Oscillator. Yesterday when we were on the air, this uh, this uh, tool, the Advanced Decline Oscillator, panel number three, the difference between the uh, 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of the Advanced Decline Line, which is still at a new all-time high today out there. In any event, that turned down below the 150 level yesterday. So if we're looking for a tell in the market, when you turn down below the 150 level, that doesn't mean it can't resolve itself at day's end. But if we're going, you, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to interpret the charts, tell you what they mean at this moment in time. Of course, anything can change. So here we take a look at that turn down in that indicator. That tells us to prepare for a market that wants to move lower. When we combine that with the very bottom panel of this chart, the very bottom panel is the spot VIX index. It's got a Bollinger Band that's uh, at the 50 to 1 level. Those are the yellow levels that you're looking at. That red line is the 50-day exponential moving average. And the blue line is where sp the spot VIX is trading right now. You can see that it is trading above the 50-day. 
So this is uh, that puts uh, uh, sellers that provides sellers with an edge in the market. So these two indicators right now are suggesting that we should prepare for some type of pullback. Does it mean that it's a major top? No, I'm just interpreting the chart and what this set of tools here is communicating to you and I. No reason for us to go take that spot VIX index out there. So we'll just simply move on and take a look at what you know what. Let's do this. Let's go over and take a look at Stevie's other charts out here. We'll get those fired up in a moment. These will be the white background daily equity future contracts. So let's go take a look at what they're communicating to you and I. And as we take a look and begin with the ES Mini upper left-hand side, you'll see we're in bar number six today, so no topping signal there. We can see we have a TD9 count top that went ahead and completed on the trading day of August 22nd. In order for that pattern to get negated, you need to see a close above 572475. We have not seen that. That's th that top still remains in place in the ES Mini. The descending trend line obviously remains in place out here. So this is adding to the idea of a retracement. Now, where would price pull back on a retracement? The first level would be that oscillator and change line, 5661. Not that much lower than where we're trading right now, maybe what, 30 points or so. Below that, it'd be 5618. And then if the move today, let's say the, mar uh, let's say the ES Mini moves lower today, the key level to be watching for support or the number to provide us with additional information is 55.63. If price closed below 55.63, that's the center of its bear structure daily profile. That'll indicate that this move is more than just a counter trend move to the downside. Doesn't mean that price wouldn't find support at 54.79 or 53.78, uh, the latter being the TD9 count breakout level. And uh, before that was the uh, actual profile here at 54.79. So the ES Mini has potential to move to the downside. Now, the interesting thing is if you and I were to go take a look at the, um, the S&P Cash Index, if we were to take a look at actually the, the, the uh, RSP, maybe you want to do that while I'm talking now. If you go take a look at the RSP, tell me what kind of pattern you see out there. Tell me what time of, type of confirmed pattern you see out there on the daily time frame. Let's go back to the NQ. The NQ we can see you've just had in really in, in most of these uh, equity few. Well, really, it's the NQ and the ES, but the NQ specifically four. Now we have four small bodied candles telling us that it's tired. Now it's tired because it's run right up in resistance. It's sitting at two days. It might have been yesterday. Uh, price hit the 0 0.618 retracement of the last leg down. Now, the last leg down that I'm referring to is the one from the TD9 count, the high of August 22nd, down the low of September the 6th out there. So we're, we've got the ascending trend line. We still have the TD9 count top that's in place out here. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a neutral-ish type signal right now with price being above the top of its profile in a sausage and change line. But you, RSP is even at a new high. But, Bill, go back and take a look at the candle, the two candles, as it passed the B point of an A to B equals CD pattern. We have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside inside the equal weighted ETF for the S&P 500. That's typically got meaning. If we take a look at the Dow equity future contract, the Dow, if we look at the cash indice, the Dow diamonds, they are all communicating. In fact, the Dow diamonds and the ED EDOW both are suggesting, and both have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. But not the Dow equity future contract out here. It's still dealing with the prior swing point resistance level, but that's about it. And finally, we take a look at the Russell 2000. It's taken out that descending trend line, so we're just simply going to get rid of that. It still has a TD9 count top that's in place, and price bound resistance at its breakdown level. So summarize all this real quickly here, Stevie. You can easily make the case with the ES Mini up at resistance, the Dow, the NQ up at resistance, the Russell 2000 up at resistance, and the YM up at resistance, that price might want to move lower. But those equal weighted ETFs are saying, not so fast. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we had talked about the RSP. That's the equal weighted ETF for the uh, S&P 500. And uh, so if you opened up your chart and you took a look at it, what you'll see is we have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. That confirmation should take us up to or it's telling us it wants to take us up to the 182.94 level. And uh, however, if you take a look at the retracement, only a 50% retracement. Typically, when you do less than a 0.618 retracement, and especially if you are on the left side of that C to D leg, what does Stevie mean by that? When you do A to B equals CD pattern, you've got to maintain the exact same angle. We don't have to do anything you want. But I would suggest you maintain the exact same angle. Why? Because it provides you and I with a ton of information. For example, right now, this is telling us that the move along the C to D leg for the RSP is much stronger than that A to B leg. Price is on the strong side. It's on the left side of that C to D leg. So your A point out here is going to be the low from August the 5th. Your B point is going to be the swing point from August 30th out there. That C point is going to be the low from September 11th. The B point had volume of uh, 4.6 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed with 4.8 million shares on September the 16th, two or three trading days ago, uh, two trading days ago. That is a confirmed eight. You don't see the chart? It should be up. It's a black background chart, Joe. Um, sorry about that. It's, I, I just checked. It's definitely a... Uh, coming to out live here, maybe check, uh, maybe check the uh, the YouTube uh, uh, channel. Sorry about that. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside with 182. Now, so the reason I point this out, look, part of this show today is really about us trying to identify um, what the intent of the market is. Are there any tells that are out here? And I think I might have that chart still up. Let me see if I can locate it. Hmm. Not going to be that chart. It is this chart. Okay. I just forgot to name it. So the top portion of this chart is the S&P. These are the daily time frames, by the way. Uh, are the uh, daily time frames for the S&P, and below it is the RSP. Let me just kind of make this a little bit more equal. There we go. 
Now, what I've identified out here are different tops. I'm not showing you my other set of charts because it's much easier to, uh, to see here. And uh, what actually kind of um, was interesting yesterday, if you take a look at all the tops that have been identified here, you'll see that each of those tops have a confirmed top for the equal weighted ETF. Something to think about, huh? Each of these, now I haven't gone back further. I probably can go back further and find some instances where they fail. This takes us back into 2022. So we've got four years in here. Not on YouTube either, huh? Stuck in the past. Hey, Al, Al, someone in our production department. i tell you what I will do inside the den here, since it seems to be stuck, is it'll take me a second to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and I've got a way to cut and paste and assemble and so forth. And uh, go ahead and post the chart, at least inside the den. So let me do that. Give me a moment to do this here. Um, not the best way to do things, but this is the way, at least for us, to solve an issue if charts aren't showing up. So I want you to be able to. the S&P cash index, but a definite top, a TD9 count top inside the RSP. If you go back to August 16th, out here um, of 2022, no signal in the S&P, an A to B equals CD top that was confirmed inside the RSP. Uh, we didn't get a, a signal out here at this uh, on the S&P 500 back on July the 18th, but we did get a TD9 count top. So that just says, boy, there is definitely something for us to think about here because we, the, the, we don't have a top inside the RSP. We've got a confirmation of price moving to the upside out there. So I hope you had all that. Does it mean that, it, that this has to be? No, but we're looking, for, we're looking for clues out here with regard to what, how the market might respond. What other clues do we have out here? Well, you know, Stevie's got this very cool tool that the folks at Seasnex have provided us with. And uh, so now this is going to be on average. Uh, so hopefully you can see this again, inside the den. Can you tell me if you're seeing this chart here? This is the uh, season next chart that's going to show us for the S&P 500 uh, cash index. And then it's going to show us how the market. Yes, you see that. OK, great. Thanks. All right. So oh, now my my screen goes black. All right. We're going to screw. We're going to go to a different screen. I don't know what happened there. I don't want to do that. I don't need that screen going black on me. So give me a moment here. We'll get to a, uh, a different white background screen, and we'll take a look at. So this is the S&P 500, and we can go back as many years as we want. Let's put this at 25 years as an example. And what I've got here, what's, what's really nice, this allows me, this tool allows us to go ahead and, and, and identify different central bank actions out here. So, for example, I have to assume we're going to get a Fed rate cut. We'll, we'll test this out for each of them. So I'm assuming we have a Fed rate cut out there. And this goes back. This tool goes back and takes a look at all of the Fed rate cuts over the last 25 years and tells us how the market traded 10 days before and 10 days after. So we take a look at this chart here. This says maybe we get a – and the zero point is today. So this says maybe we get a one-day rally and then the market starts to resume lower out there. Now that's over a um, – that's over a 25-year period. Over a 15-year period, same message. Um, over the last 10 years, same message. Now, if I go back 96 years, and I don't know if the date, here it says we just continue to rally. I know that is opposite of uh, what has typically taken place uh, with regard to interest rates and the behavior of the S&P 500. So I don't know if going back 96 years is really just too far uh, to go back. Uh, and I think that it is. Uh, out there, so uh, so that so so let me go, just go back to a 25-year period of time out here. So that's if we get a Fed rate cut. What if we get no action today? What if it's just simply Fed no? Oops, sorry about that. Let's go with Fed no rate change. So we go with Fed no rate change. What does this say? This says we move down for a day and then we move higher out there. I would think that market participants might prefer this versus over a rate cut. What happens if? Um, what happens if? Uh, Fed rate. Well, we're not going to get a Fed rate hike today, so there's no reason for us to screw around with that. So that's what the seasonal charts tell us over a 25-year period of time. Of course, we have even more charts that tell us 
uh, that even visually show us exactly what has transpired during rate cut periods out there. So you got to be careful for what it is that you're looking for. Um, I'll get that chart up on my screen during during the uh, show, maybe during the next segment. Let's do this now. We do have a request to take a look at uh, cane. Cane is the ETF for sugar. Sugar's having a beautiful day out there. So if we take a look at cane, then what we're going to do here is we're going to go take a look at the actual uh, uh, sugar contract. But this is completing right now. This is completed a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Does that mean that it's a sell? And the answer to that question is absolutely not. So let's take here's the A to B line. We'll just simply move this over to the C point. You can see here, you can see today we're above the one to one level. This can certainly continue to move higher out there. Uh, in fact, what you'd be looking for for some type of top out here, this is negating a TD9 count top from back in uh, July of 2024. So this wants to continue to move higher. Uh, Jambalaya, if you're asking me what's the next price target, I would say it's 12.09. That's the TD9 count breakdown resistance level on the weekly time frame. It does have a weekly road momentum indicator bottom. Kane has a TD9 count bottom for its monthly time frame. Looks like uh, sugar is headed higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Rides for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com.
Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. So during that break, I took a look at the uh, ETF Kane, which is what uh, Jim Belay had asked us to take a look at. And uh, I was about to show you the active contract, the November contract for Sugar. That's 2024. But that contract is not in Kane. So I don't know if you knew this, uh, Jambalaya, but what you've got to be paying attention to is you've got to be take, paying attention to the March, um, the March uh, 2025 contract, the March 2026 contract, and the May 2025 contract. They're all about 33%, give or take. So it's equally split between those. So those are the three contracts that you properly need to manage in order to really manage that cane trade out there. Here happens to be the November trade, uh, the November contract out there. In fact, so let's put it, let's put up H of 2025. So let's see if we've got that out here. SB uh, March of 2025 out here. So what we're looking for, and interestingly enough, I do have uh, I do have some profiles even in the monthly time frame. So this still looks very bullish. We've got the A to B equals C D pattern. You can see on the daily time frame, we're trading above its weekly uh, resistance level at 1984. And it uh, looks to me like what it wants to target is a 2285 level. So go take each of those contracts. That's the way that you would do it to get a real better understanding of what Kane is suggesting uh, it is going to do out there. Now, there was a, on Monday when I did the uh, uh, the segment with Tom, uh, we had some issues, initial issues uh, signing in. I didn't really get a chance to complete the, that review. And there have been a couple of questions. McGuffey was one, but there's there's been others. Uh, as well. So I thought I would go ahead and try to do this here since I've got a time. And so uh, my my contention is that we're in the early stages of the next major bull market uh, run in gold. So how do we come up with that? So if we go back and we take a look at historical charts out here, if we go back to 1976, uh, that 1976 bottom for gold on a monthly basis was confirmed with the Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom. We can see that that entire rally only saw one monthly three bar rally. There was nothing beyond that other than just a couple of one month uh, moves to the downside. So that's important to take a look at. Uh, only one between the 76 and then the 1980 high out there. If we come and take a look at 2001, we had a rally from 2001 up to 2011. That bottom was also confirmed with the Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern. Again, we're looking at a monthly time frame chart. And here you can see all of the two bar moves to the uh, downside, all two bar moves to the downside from a monthly standpoint. So what that also tells us, even though I believe we're in the beginning of a major bull market run, we should expect or anticipate to have a two to three bar pullback out there. So we want to be uh, on lookout for when that might unfold out here. Um, if we take a look at... Uh, this is the monthly chart now for gold. Uh, this is the this is the continuous contract. And if we take a look at where that blue arrow is, that happens to be February of 2024. So that was the last significant pullback that we had. That was just really, and I say significant, I'm really referring to the number of bars. That was a two-bar pullback to the downside. Now, you can easily argue that the next, that the major bull run, maybe it started back in uh, 2018, 2019. I'm just, on a monthly basis, here's our first two-bar pullback. Um, not first, but here's a two-bar pullback that I believe has identified that bottom, that major bottom out there. If we take a look at, uh, um, if we take a look at this monthly chart out here, and we take a look at the TD9 counts, the TD9 counts identified the high back in September of 2011. It identified the high back in uh, August of 2020. Uh, in fact, these are only TD9 counts that are out, so I'm not cherry-picking out here. And then it identified the low in um, uh, in uh, 2015. Now, you'll see some other nine counts. For example, this one out here during the 2016 time period. But that's bar number seven that actually made that high. So that didn't qualify as a TD9 count top. So I had originally, and those of you who were listening to the show, uh, we had a daily, we had a weekly, and we had a monthly TD9 count top. The monthly is still in place because we don't close the month until next Monday. Uh, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. But you can see price is trading well above that TD9 count high out there. Here was the, uh, so here's the monthly again. The number to be watching on a monthly basis is going to be 2537. So if we negate these TD9 counts, that's a suggestion that we should continue to move to higher ground. Here's a look. Now, this is a snapshot from a couple of days ago. It hasn't really changed that much. Um, last Thursday, we negated the daily TD9 count top. Last Friday, we negated the weekly TD9 count top. And at the end of the month, we may negate that pattern as well. This was my anticipation that we were going to go ahead and see that two-month, that two-bar decline with, re with regard to gold moving into the October timeframe. 
Clearly, that is not happening or does not appear to be happening. The monthly chart is the only holdout for the bears out there that I would say with regard to Goldilocks. So it's if we take a look at a 56-year cycle, right now we're going into the most favorable time period for gold. You've got uh, basically six consecutive months where you should see higher highs, higher closes out there. So we're in the very seasonal time frame with those TD9 count patterns being uh, negated out here. Now, if we take a look at gold and we go to a seasonal time frame over a 56-year period and we take a look at the presidential cycle, this is the only pattern that I've been able to identify that says, just still be careful, Steve. I know what you're showing, everybody. you got negated patterns out there. There are roads, momentum indicator signals that are present, too. So if we were to get bearish reversal candles, that would be the pattern that would identify a top. So here, during presidential cycles, we typically get a rally through about, you know, now. Uh, this was taken a few on uh, Monday. So, you know, it says we could get a, a, a top. Uh, if, if, in fact, this were to be the analog uh, for, uh, for Goldilocks. So that's what's going on there. Uh, this was taking a look at that gold priced in all the major currencies out here, and it had made new all-time highs in terms of uh, dollar, U.S. dollar, Canadian, in terms of yuan out here. I'm not seeing anything significant here in, in, uh, in uh, gold priced in other currencies that suggests that we can't rally further. Uh, here is gold with regard to its uh, horizontal trading range boundary lines. Now, this shows us that we are up near resistance levels. Near resistance level on the monthly, that's a, a solid uh, or the dash red line, solid green line at the 26 uh, uh, 38 level, 25.94 on the monthly time frame. So we are up at a place where there is some resistance out here inside of gold. Now, if you take a look at the quarterly A to B equals CD pattern out here, we can see this was a 52% retracement. We're still trading on the left side of that C to D leg. The one to one takes us to 27. 2716. I would say if gold is going to continue this rally, more likely we'll see 3170 or 3748 out there. So those are the reasons that I believe gold has made a major bottom out there. This chart here, by the way, I'd mentioned about interest rates. So this chart here takes us back to uh, 2003, 2004. And the uh, bottom panel is the S&P 500. The center panel is the Fed discount rate. So if we take a look at the Fed discount rates out here, you can see that the um, uh, if you go all the way over to the left, as interest rates were rising, what happened to the S&P 500? It, too, was rising. We had 170 percent increase, basically, in interest rates. The Dow, or the S&P, I should say, rose by 34 percent. And what happened when we started reducing interest rates? Well, the S&P 500 moved lower. Now, this is a monthly time frame chart that we're taking a look at. So this isn't going to be taking a look at a one-day or two-day knee-jerk reaction. Uh, or anything along those lines. In 2016, we had a, uh, when Trump took office, we immediately saw rates move higher. What did we see take place with the S&P 500? It rose by 54% in the face of 180% uh, uh, increase in uh, rates out there. So folks, we gotta be careful. Well, you don't have to be careful what, what we wish for. You and I, we trade both sides of the trade. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. 
Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome Bob, back, folks. Hey, on my screen right now, you can see the uh, sugar contract. Uh, this is a seasonal pattern for sugar out here. We can see that over the past, uh, this is a... Uh, 10-year period of time, we're in the most favorable seasonal month for sugar. If you take a look at the very bottom right, and you take a look at September, so it looks like a very good trade. Sugar typically tops out or peters out, uh, usually in the early October to November time frame. So you'll just simply be watching for some kind of tops around that uh, time uh, jam. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, we did have some requests, a couple of requests that have come in. Uh, this uh, First, we're going to switch screens out here. We'll get those white background screens. We're going to take a look at SWN. That's the uh, ticker symbol, so give me a moment. We'll get there. Let's change the charts over to the proper chart. And there we go. So we take a look at SWN. We can see a nice roadsman to indicator bottom that formed with a beautiful handler candle. This is Southwest Energy. So let's take a look at that pattern on the daily time frame. You can see that that formed out here on September the uh, 10th, Mohammed. Uh, we are now trading above the top of its profile. Uh, we're trading above its oscillating change line. Should rally further. Now, it's trading into a prior swing point that formed out here on August 26th. That swing point did volume of 11.8 million shares. So far, in just over two hours of trading, we're at 7.7 .7 million shares. So price is moving into that swing point with volume. And uh, that suggests that price should at least go target the high, 644. It, well, it may very well go ahead and take out that swing point. If it takes out that swing point, does that provide us with any additional insight as to where price might head to? And the answer to that question is no. But if it takes out that swing point, what I mean by taking out, I mean they close specifically above the August 26 swing point at 644, that should lead to higher price. There's really no resistance on the daily time frame chart out here. The next resistance level would be up at 699. The weekly chart shows us that the next area of resistance for you um, would be at 644. So the top of that swing point was 644. 644 is the weekly oscillator and change line. So what that tells us, Mohammed, is that that's your significant resistance area out there. And if price can take that out, then you should see a move to 668. That would be the center of the weekly profile. Price is trading above the top of its monthly profile, but below the green oscillator and change line, its signal here is basically bullish out there. So you're bullish on the monthly. Um, you're, you're, you're not bullish on the uh, weekly out here. But we are trading above last week's high, so that says the rally should continue. So 644, Mohammed is your number for uh, SWAN, for SWN, that is Southwestern Energy. You would also like to look at STAA. So let's get those charts fired up, and this is for Star Surgical. We take a look at Star Surgical. What we see out here is that this has a profile change in trend. That profile change in trend would be confirmed today with a close above 3165. 
What that means, Mohammed, is that price is taking out profile resistance. I don't see any other daily resistance out here, not until you get up towards the $47 area. We're not even going to go take a look at that. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, a TD9 count bottom would go ahead and confirm this week as long as price closes below 33.27. So you really don't want your 3256. As long as price closes below uh, that 33, whatever the number was that I gave you, then you'll get a confirmed TD9 count bottom that took price right back to its breakout level. It had formed a TD9 count top that took us back to that breakout area. So that would then suggest that price would run up to its oscillator and change line around 3564. And above that, 3866 would be the number. On a monthly time frame, uh, what you've got for Star Surgical is a TD9 count bottom that has led to a consolidation. So that really paints the picture for you with regard to what Star Surgical is doing. It is consolidating within the range of 2941, the bottom of that monthly profile, up to the 4594 area. So you got bottoms on the uh, day. Well, you got a bottom pattern on the daily, a change in trend, profile change in trend, a clear bottom on the monthly. You've got a uh, you've even got a road momentum indicator bottom going back further on the weekly. So you've got a bottom pattern there as well. So STAA, that is Star Surgical, should continue its rally. But watch that um, watch that uh, 35, 60 ish type area out there. That's where you're likely going to run into some resistance. Um, we've got a request from uh, GTE, I believe, to take a look at XPEV. So let's get these charts fired up. The question specifically is, what is your count up? on a weekly basis, and is there more upside? So we're only in bar number four to the upside out here. Uh, the daily time frame looks like it wants higher price as well. The reason I say that is because it negated a TD9 count top, and it did it on the trading session of September 11th out there. The pullback today has been a pullback to test support. That's that green oscillator and change line. So it still remains bullish on the daily time frame. If price were to close below that oscillator and change line, and that oscillator and change line is at $8.70, then you'd hit 860. Well, big whoop there, Stevie. Well, 860 is really a key level of support. Why? Because price has traded above the top of that daily bearish structure profile for more than two consecutive sessions. And we don't have a topping pattern. So if this is just a counter trend move, which I would suppose uh, it, it is at this stage, it's either found support right now at that green oscillator change line or it would at 860. GTE, if price closed below 860, this tells us that the move lower, even though Stevie doesn't have a topping pattern out there, that this is more than just a counter trend move to the downside. And that would open up the door to 770. We don't, that is not the signal we have just yet, but we do have price levels for you to pay attention to that it would assist you with regard to where is price likely headed to. If we look at a monthly time frame chart, not much there. What this really tells us. This is a bullish structured profile, been in place for about five months out here. You've really got to see it close above 899 on a monthly basis. If you do that, then you'll get up to the 1143 area out there. So your question was, is there more upside potential? Uh, it all depends on how price handles this 860 to 870 level. I would say the answer is yes, but if you close below 860, then the answer is no. And that's about the best that I can do for you. Hope that that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for writing in. Just checking to see if there's any other email requests that I have overlooked out here. And I believe the answer to that question is no. No, I've got everything. And now the question is, how about inside the tiger's den? Do I have everything there? I believe that I do. So what do we want to do next out here with another minute to go? Um, Let's take a look at a couple of top stocks and see what they're doing out here. Let's take a look at Microsoft as an example. So we look at MSFT. Let's see what kind of signals we have out here. We've got uh, price getting all the way back to its TD9 count breakdown level. And that was at the price point of 44.48. So it makes a nice TD9 count bottom. It does that in the trading session of August the 5th. It makes a TD9 count top. It does that on August 22nd. That TD9 count top took price right back to its breakout level. And after it after it found support there, it rallied up to the TD9 count breakdown area that had formed. So what should, uh, what is Microsoft likely to do next? I would say that if Microsoft closes the day below 432.15, it will likely pull back to the 426.65, 418 area. That's the daily time frame for Microsoft. What's going on there on a weekly time frame? Not really much to assist us. Let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at Apple. See what Apple is doing out here. Uh, Dan wants to take a look at TLT. We'll do that. So, Dan, the 30-year uh, Treasury has a TD9 count topic. Completed that pattern yesterday. Uh, but we'll, get, we'll, we'll take a look at that. If we take a look at Apple out here, Apple is back inside its profile right now. 
um, on a daily time frame. Let me just open up this chart, get a better feel for what's going on here. So the daily time frame chart is not providing me with a clear feel as to what Apple's intent is. What this does tell us is that if Apple were to close below 211.97, we should get back to test the August 5th lows out there. That's not the message that we have right now. If price can close today above 218.08, we're back inside its profile. Um, it's a bullish structured profile. So at 220.82, which price hit this morning, that's the area where a counter trend move to the upside would end. So watch 220.82 out there. There's additional resistance inside of Apple, 222.32, followed by 224. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Uh, sorry about that. I talked right through the break. I've got some sound issues going on and wasn't paying attention to the clock. So I don't know uh, exactly where I left off. But with regard to TLT, Dan from New York, here's its chart. You'll see the TD9 count top. Uh, as far as price projection levels out here, you could watch 99.71, 98.95, and 97.81. I'll just put the 30-year back up on my screen because I don't know if um, – if uh, I was talking through the break as we were discussing this, but here you'll see the confirmed roads momentum indicator and TD9 count top. The level here to be watching is this 125.31 area. This is a bullish structured, pro bear structured profile. And if price were to close below 125.31, it increases the odds of move back to 124.93. Uh, to finish out the show, let's go over to these day trading type intraday charts out here. We've got for the ES Mini. What kind of signals are we getting as we speak right now? I would say not much. I would say pay attention to the 240-minute chart, the four-hour chart out here. Why? Because we've been consolidating. Well, I can't even say that. No. 
I can say watch the support level on the four hour time frame chart, 5676. That appears to be a key level. If price were to close below 5676, we likely see a run down to the 5605 area. That's its four hour TD9 count breakout area. Uh, what else do we have? Nothing else. That, well, you have 15 minutes. You've got a TD9 count bottom that's going to go ahead and complete here as we come off the air. So that suggests we should see a rally. That rally should take us up towards the 5696 level out there. Let's see if we get the NQ charts fired up here. Give it just one moment. See if we get those fired up. Uh, we'll try to go as long into the show as we can. Looks like we've got about 50 seconds before we are totally cut off. So let's see. Come on. Help us out here. Help us out. So in the case of the NQ, where's the key level to be watching to the downside? So here we don't see any kind of intraday TD9 count bottom. We only saw that in the 15-minute chart for the ES Mini. I would say the keyest level of support inside the NQ is going to be that uh, daily oscillator and change line. That key level is 19473. Folks, great to be with you. Um, look forward to the fireworks at about 2 o'clock. Have a wonderful Wednesday, and I look forward to seeing you on Terrific Thursday. Take care and be safe out there.